Can we intrude the second molar without tipping it? This was the main question analyzed in this experimental study conducted by professors from Brazil and United States, published in the American Journal of Orthodontics. It's a very nice paper and I want to share the main results with you today. The authors have used a patient model adapted to an orthodontic force transducer to record the forces in the three planes of space. But I will show you only the main results, which are related to the vertical forces in the Z plane and the tipping moments in the X plane. The authors have compared two appliances, a rectangular loop fabricated with a TMEA 17 by 25 wire versus a super elastic night eye 0.014 continuous arch. The forces and the couples were recorded every 0.5 millimeter with the second molar extruded 3 millimeter. This problem is very relevant since we know that second molars often extrude for several reasons. And because they sit at the, the terminal end of the wire, the lack of a distal fulcrum makes predictable intrusion almost impossible. Moreover, it's important to remember that with a continuous arch wire, we will establish here a geometry one force system, a step relationship. And in this case, inserting a continuous arch wire besides the intrusive force produced in the second molar, we will also have two unwanted mesial tipping moments on both teeth. And that is very problematic. First, it slows treatment because teeth take longer to reach their correct positions. And worse, they often get there only after back and forth movements, which we know are a major contributor to roof resorption. And that's why the rectangular loop is the best tool to avoid these side effects and to produce a fast and more predictable movement. The rectangular loop can deliver smaller forces, a constant moment force ratio, and most importantly, with this tool, we can dissociate the forces and the couples. In practice, it means that we can control the force only or the moment only delivery, depending on the movement we want to achieve. In this case, for example, that we want only pure intrusion in the second molar across the three millimeters of the movement, this is only possible because of the complex 3D configuration of this loop, which we will fine tune with specific pre-activation bands to generate exactly this desired force system. We can also analyze the static equilibrium in this condition in order to predict the forces perceived by the anchorage unit. What the anchorage unit, in this case, especially the first molar, will feel. If we apply an isolated force in the second molar, our active unit, the anchorage unit will necessarily receive both an extrusive force plus a mesial crown tipping moment on this first molar. If you remember this configuration, it represents a geometry 4 force system. And the rectangular loop is the only appliance that we can deliver predictably and consistently force system in a wide range of deactivation. Let's return to our comparison, the rectangular loop versus the continuous arch wire. Notice that in the rectangular loop mechanics, we can apply a geometry for for system, exactly what we need in this case. By contrast, using the continuous arch wire, we will produce essentially a geometry one for system with unwanted mesial tipping on both teeth and excessively high forces. Take a look at the, the vertical forces levels produced by each appliance. The solid lines here represent 
the force, the vertical force produced in the continuous arch wire, the red line, and in the rectangular loop, the, the blue line. Notice how the forces are significantly higher with the continuous arch wire comparing with the rectangular loop. These elevated forces can be harmful not only to the second molar that we want to intrude, but also to the anchorage unit, which in some case, especially in long phase patients with lower bite force, for example, we can produce undesirable extrusion and even opening the bite sometimes. Another point that claimed my attention in this paper was the magnitude of the couples perceived by the anchorage unit, the first molar. Notice here, the double lines, the red ones, is the moment produced by the continuous arch, and the blue one, the moment produced by the rectangular loop in the first molar. Notice that the couples produced by the continuous arch wire are significantly higher than the ones produced by the rectangular loop. Translating these findings to the clinical risk, we can say that stronger couples equal worse side effects with a continuous arch, especially if we are dealing with long face patients, as I have said before. To sum up, my two main clinical tips from this very nice paper are for larger intrusion movements from two to three millimeters, I highly recommend you start with a pre-activated rectangular loop. I'm sure that you will obtain a fast and more precise movement. But for small intrusion movements up to one millimeter, the continuous arch can achieve a good result with negligible side effects. I hope you have enjoyed this brief review and if you want to master all bands of the rectangular loops and the main segmented techniques, comment loops below and I will send you my best offer to join the most complete online workshop on this topic. I hope to see you in our next videos and may biomechanics always be with you.